So I can't believe how cultural Calcutta is. You've got the mosques going on, you've got them behind the church of the Chinese. This is the Tong On Church, which is the first church that was built. Just down there was the first settlers that came in uh, in the 1718 down there. And then when they had enough money, they built this. And this is the first thing. This has just been reintroduced about a year or two ago and people have started to use it again. This place is just insane. It's a melting pot! Si'i Temple, which is in Chinatown or the Chinese area in Calcutta. And what's very interesting about this temple is that they don't actually preach or pray to the gods, they pray to the ancestors that first arrived here in 1718. So there's now about, were about 35,000 Chinese that were here, and now it's reduced down to about 2,000. And in 1965, they all dispersed across different parts of the country. They went to places like Hong Kong, Macau, uh, UK, US also as well to some Southeast Asian parts. So now there's a small community left that have a hold, strong hold on the cuisine, the pork, and still add flair to this city. Fuchong is one of the oldest factories of Chinese produce. And so here is the main warehouse and they make it just a short while away from here that supplies all of India and it has all the Chinese and Thai products. So basically, this is again another part of an integral institution of Chinese culture that they've set up. Calcutta is a laid-back affair and in this area, it's about Chinatown. And so one of the famous things here, this is one of the oldest places. They don't call it a restaurant, they call it an eating house because basically it's done at the front of someone's house and they've created their own culture around this. So let's go and check out what they have to offer and see what delights we can taste. So Tong Nam is about 102 years old. It's been passed down from generation to generation and Onaban has very kindly shown me some of these secret spots of where to go and also what to eat. So we've got a little bit of pork today. A little bit of pork, wonton. Fantastic. Deep fried and uh, pepper chicken, spicy and hot. Okay, so I can see the Indian twist on this. A bit of Kashmiri chili in there. Anything else? Indianized. Indianized, a bit of masala spicy. in there. Yeah. Okay, so what do you do? You just put a little bit of uh, lemon little on there? Lime. lime. And then we can eat chili and tomato sauce. Uh, they have a mix of both. Which is again a spicy. This is just like Indonesia. It's fantastic. That's Again, actually very similar to the momo sauce. Is it? Okay. Because we have the momo sauce in back uh, home and we put gram masala in it. Um, yes. But that's more from the Nepalese sort of side, isn't it? I think. No. Yeah, that's from the Nepalese Tibetan, Tibetan uh, side. Yeah. Tibetan side. Momo is very Tibetan. Um, so again, you know, it's it's interesting to see that Chinese food, wherever you are, Indonesia, Malaysia, India, UK they bring their culture with them, which is always dumplings, noodles, and soups, and that's what we're going to eat today. So let's have a taste of the first one. Mm. Just like Chinese anywhere you get anywhere around the world, in the 1980s, mm. Mm. Fried, fried noodles, no, fried wontons. Okay. Chicken pop, or oh, chicken peels. Here we go, fried chicken. Mm. Very good. Oh. Very similar to Amatisari. Mm. Basically. Not much difference. Not much difference. 